out of everything It's all amazing Say we're born again Cause I've been born again I'm born again And it's amazing It's the best thing It's glorious It's life changing It's feeling It's amazing It's the best thing It's glorious It's life changing myself I was not going to do that stupid hand wave and I still did it I'm really sorry <laughs> so welcome to Saturday Night's Luff um hosted by Red Rose this evening um most of you will know who I am by now I am Sarah I'm the team leader in the north hello from me I've got a lovely co-host this evening Caitlin hello um so I'm Caitlin and I am the community engager for the north Excellent. And tonight we have got the lovely Lindsay Jackson doing comments. Hello. Yeah, I'm Lindsay Jackson. I'm a lead volunteer in the North for Red Rose Recovery, uh, an advocate of the Lancashire User Forum. I will be doing your shout out comments. You're also going to be getting some of my story. So bear with me, there may be tears. Uh, but if you put any comments in the thing, if I'm looking down, I do apologise. I've got two devices and loads of paper. I'll do my best to shout your name out. So good evening to everybody watching. Excellent. Okay, next round of my screen, we've got the fabulous Mark. Say hi, Mark. Do you want to mute yourself? Hi there, Sarah and everybody. I'm a service user. I've been attending the activities at Red Rose for about, I don't know, six weeks, yeah. something like that, between Lancaster and Morecambe. So somebody found out that I play the guitar and uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> I've been invited to, to perform something this evening. So I'm going to be doing something original that I wrote this summer. Um, so I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, see, this is what we do at Red Rose. So anybody that comes to group, if we find out you've got a secret skill, uh, and uh, we, we pull you in. And uh, next round on my screen, we've got, oh, look at this. We've got like all the Mansfields in the house. <laughs> like, it's like Team Mansfield there in the thing. We've got the beautiful Fred and Donna. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm Fred, I'm a lead, lead volunteer at Red Rose. I'm gonna be doing updates on what groups we do and giving you a few poems. Excellent. Hi, I'm Donna, the wife of an addict. I'm going to be telling my story about the effect it had on our lives. Excellent. And who's the dog? We got to introduce the dog this as well. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we, we like to we like to have the introductions of the whole Mansfield household. Absolutely. You know, I know your daughter's running about in the background as well. No, she's, she's gone. Left she's left. Oh, she gone? Oh, she's gone. On the phone and she's left. Oh, we frightened Sarah, obviously. Yeah. Right, so Linz, who's been joining? Who's joining us? Oh, we've already got a list. Right, we've got the lovely Dan Little Child, um, Sarah from Red Rose, Ollie McMillan, 
Um, Jonathan Chapman, good evening, a regular watcher. I know for a fact is a regular watcher. Becky Owen, the lovely Lorna. Uh, Jonathan Lorna. again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elizabeth Bridgehouse. Now I've had a message about Elizabeth Bridgehouse, so as you'll probably get a couple of mentions. Stephen Leonard. Jonathan likes your hand wave, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Dad, little child. <laughs> Glenn's in his king's chair, but he's not now because he's disappeared. Um, <laughs> Gary Flynn. Gary Flynn's mum is obviously, I'm guessing is, yes, it is, Elizabeth Bridgehouse. So hello again. Elizabeth Bridgehouse gets two shout outs. So <laughs> hi to Gary Flynn and his mum. Jonathan Chapman, thank you for that. Ooh, Lindsay is back. And some yeah, more parts. Lindsay thank you. Yeah, Lindsay is back. It's been a while. <laughs> um, Lorna again, the lovely, fabulous, dirty gecko himself, Chris Rowlands. Yep, yep. Um, Dan again, Jonathan, Lorna, it's all the same people. I'm not telling you my secret skill. I don't know what that's about, Jonathan. Wade, <laughs> oh, Wade Rushton. Hey, Wade Rushton, I haven't seen him for an age. Virginia Moss, beautiful lady. I was in rehab with Virginia Moss, absolute legend of a woman. Kathy Elizabeth Hardy, a heart, that was my maiden name. Uh, Wade again and Nick from our lovely Red Rose Recovery. Fabulous. So don't forget, guys, keep liking and sharing this. We want to reach as many people as possible. Um, so if anybody is new to the love and this is the first time that you've watched, um, this is about us creating a space for you guys to have a voice, um, talking all things recovery, all things mental health, you know, what's going on in our community. Um, and the theme of tonight is hope. Now, I think hope, I think we can all say, you know, it's something that at times we've not had, you know, um, it's one of the most important things I think to have in recovery um, is hope, um, something that we all need. Um, and hopefully, uh, see what I did there? Um, hopefully you're all, uh, you're going to get a little bit of hope from everything that's shared tonight. Um, and you're not going to get too sick of me along the way. So we'll see. Um, right, okay, let's get straight into the show then. So first up, we're going to go to one of my personal favourite people. Um, not that I try to have favourites, but yes, it's you, Lindsay. Right. <laughs> um, we've not seen her for a while. Um, she's, been, she's been hiding in the wings, although she's not gone anywhere. Um, so back by popular demand, <laughs> very beautiful, Lindsay Jackson. Woo! <laughs> Right, before I, before I forget, Emily, the beautiful Emily Rook has, has, um, or Kinder, I do apologise, I've forgotten which one you're on at the moment, Emily Kinder, she will absolutely crucify me if I don't shout her name out. So the beautiful Emily, Jill Whitehead, Sharon Kenji, sorry, that name is completely wrong, um, and Kathy Elizabeth Hardy again. So before I start my mutterings, I will apologise in advance. There's a lot of personal stuff that I'm going to share with you tonight. Like I say, I am in recovery myself. Um, and I have found a file today from Littledale Hall. Um, and I've been reading that. So there's emotions coming out of me <laughs> left sideways today. So um, it could get emotional. Uh, I use, do, use a lot of humour when I talk about my recovery. Um, and that's usually, um, it's either happiness and mad laughter or crying. So I'm thinking now I did, we did, or several of the people on the screen did a speaker boot camp and must mention it before I forget with the lovely Pete Yarwood. Um, so I'm thinking now I'm going to have this, absolutely have this, you know, <laughs> bob on. Anybody who doesn't know what speaker boot camp is about, we've done day one. Uh, and day two is absolutely incredible. So if you do hear about speaker boot camp and you get a chance to do speaker boot camp, um, please do so. Um, and also from the last loaf, which Sarah was the lovely host for, the guys, and I can't remember, I remember one was called Jay and the other guy. Um, I want to hopefully see the, anyone who, who witnessed their life stories, um, which were traumatic gary thank you glen island gary and jay the the stories were pretty horrific in my mind so not everybody has had a dreadful childhood if that makes sense um mine was awesome so that's that's the beginning 
Um, and I'm going to share hopefully a bit of my work that I did from Little Dale with you um, to see how I've progressed because you've got to sort of look back to see your progression. Um, so like I said, my childhood was um, a happy one. Uh, I was born in a place called Clown and I know there's people there absolutely peeing themselves now because that speaks volumes, uh, which is a small mining village in um, Derbyshire. Uh, my dad worked down the pit and he was an incredible man. Um, he must have had some kind of foresight. Uh, so he decided he was going to leave working down the pit, a miner, and join the prison service, uh, which was a pretty good idea because the rest of my family were destroyed with uh, when Maggie Thatcher and the miners' strike were on. So well done to my dad, Jack. Um, uh, like I say, I was born in Clown and moved very short. I think I was months old. We moved to Birmingham. My dad got his first post at Winston Green in Birmingham. Um, and it was, uh, I remember happy times, walks along the canal with my dad and it was very happy and loved spending time with my dad and my mum, of course. Um, but times with my dad were very, very precious. Um, We spent eight years, um, about eight years, I think. And then my dad decided he didn't want to bring his children up uh, in the middle of Birmingham. So we moved to a place called Barnard Castle in about, I think it was like 1977, 78. Uh, and we'll continue to have uh, a happy, happy, happy upbringing. Um, One of the walks along the canal, as I was talking about, was uh, pricking elderberries. My mum was a big winemaker. There was always Demi Johns of wine bubbling away. Uh, and I remember us having to decant this wine into jugs. Not saying my mum's made me into a raging alcoholic, but that taste for alcohol. I don't ever remember it being a, ooh, booze, you know. And remember quite distinctly my mum saying, uh, she allowed us to have a drink and odd shandy here and there. And if she let the children have a drink, then I wouldn't. It wouldn't be an issue later in life. That, that doesn't necessarily work. Um, like I said my sister and my brother have got no issues with alcohol, um, but it's sort of always been a part of my life. If that makes sense. Um, and I dealt with alcohol. It's always been there from from. YMCA discos as a teenager and sneak insider. Uh, and I've always liked it. Um, loved it. Didn't, you know, as most people do, you know, I always try booze and uh, was never put off when I was sick, <laughs> as I was many times. Um, and always still liked it. Uh, and I functioned uh, for many, many, many years with alcohol. Um, I met my husband when I was 16 and I got engaged on my 18th birthday. Um, I see I'm losing my train of thought. I told you I'd go. Okay, I've tried to write notes today. It's just completely gone off. Um, but like I say, drink was an issue. My husband, um, who I have my eldest son with, um, we had a lot of many, many happy years and I drank, we drank every day uh, and I didn't say that was a problem because I functioned um, and I only remember a, a two week time when I was on some antibiotics or something that I didn't drink. So I figured out quite recently, actually, I think for over 30 years of my life on earth. I've, I've had a drink, not necessarily been drunk. Um, so I kept the job. I uh, started in 1987 and I got promoted, uh, worked my way through the shop, supervisor, store supervisor, store manager. Um, and I got my gold watch for 20 years service. Um, but where, at that point, um, the 20 years, when I was due to get presented with this gold watch for 20 years service, I was poorly. Um, and my mental health had been crashed. I didn't understand it. My sister had suffered from it. My mother had su suffered from it. 
And looking back now, I, I, I had obviously no understanding and I looked at it as why have you, what have you got to be sad about? You've got this, this, this and this. Why could you possibly? Uh, obviously, I have a massively different understanding of it now and um, alcohol became medicine. Um, so when I lost my job, my store manager, and I absolutely loved it, um, full steam ahead with the old boost situation. Um, so the functioning alcoholic became a full blown alcoholic. Like I said, this is, by the way, I'm going to skip back a minute and I'm, I'm going to, I know I'm for a fact, I'm jumping backwards and forwards. Um, I'm going to jump back to when I was at, in fact, I'm going to jump back to when I was 13. My best friend, Jane, um, when I was 13, uh, it was one of, one of my earliest traumas, if this makes sense. Um, and I've just heard, listening to Gary's and um, Jay's stories, that a lot of this trauma, and I, I've thought back um, as to what that could be. And when my best friend, Jane was, uh, dad hung himself. He took his own life in the garage he owned and her mum had asked me to go and stay with her. Uh, and her brother was in the bedroom next door. And I don't think I should have, it, thinking back, it was a good idea. It was a really not a good idea. And I can, I can hear him next door, sounded like he was battering through the wall and literally screaming his head off. And that was a lot to deal with at that age. Um, and the same lady, like I said, she was my best friend. Uh, um, I was 21 in the February and she was 21 in the March. By which point she'd kind of married into quite a wealthy family. So they had this big party. Um, and at Jane's 21st, um, this was my next trauma that I can, that I can recall. Um, we were dancing away and uh, there was free carver as well. That it was quite a new thing back then. Champagne was champagne. Um, Prosecco hadn't even been mentioned. I don't remember, but it was free booze. So we were dancing away um, and sat down and my mum was there. Um, and my then husband was there and we were dancing away. My mum turned to me and she said, you look like your real dad. Now that was a massive, massive, massive shock to me. And still, to be honest, I can't, I struggle to get my head around that. Um, Mark said my mum, my mum and dad got married on my dad's 19th birthday and she was a virgin when she got married. And somewhere down the line, she had an affair and I was it. So to me, my dad wasn't my dad anymore. My sister wasn't my sister anymore. My brother wasn't my brother anymore. Um, and later on in life, if I ever spoke, sort of spoke about it, all I got was, well, your dad's always be your dad. And that's absolutely the case. It wasn't my biological dad, but he was. But I still had so many unanswered questions and still have. Um, so when I say the abuse and trauma wasn't a thing, but um, addiction doesn't choose who it um, who it affects. As well, I've seen in the the years I've been working with Red Rose Recovery. Um, so back forward to um, Mary and David. I said I have my son together. Um, and my eldest boy, who I had with David, is now 28. Um, our relationship broke down, like I say, we drank every day. And for many, many, many years, I was happy, or certainly thought I was happy. He lost his job. He got demoted. I got promoted at work. And I think that was a big thing for him. Uh, and he became a very, very possessive 
overbearing, jealous, violent man. Um, and I lived with that for many, many years. Um, fear of being on my own, fear of how he would react. Um, and in the end, I met another guy and I left. I left him um, when Ryan was seven. Um, when I went to live with my parents. Um, that's not a regret because he wasn't a very nice man. Um, or he certainly wasn't to me anyway. Like I say, he's had issues because as well as his own addiction problems, which he's still dealing with himself, he um, is a homosexual. So I don't suppose it was easy living with him when he was obviously fighting with his sexuality as well. Um, anyway, I stayed with my with Glenn for the next 18 and a half years. Um, so I say I'd been drinking for 16 years. I was with, with David and we say drank every day. And when I met Glenn, obviously I was, I was still drinking and he would drink with me um, and he would buy books about cocktails and he would, you know, would make cocktails together and it became a thing. But then he could obviously see it was getting more problematic. Um, and when I lost my job, um, I say it did become an, an issue. But in, when he started commenting on my drinking, um, the it didn't stop me drinking. In fact, and I'm not saying that's a blame. That is not a that isn't anyone's fault. But it became secretive. Um, I would lie about how much I'd had to drink. So I say, well, I've only had half a bottle of wine, and I'd had other drink. Um, hidden everywhere or I'd try and stop and I'd buy non-alcoholic wine and I'd fill it up with real wine and, I'd, and it was mission impossible uh, and my alcohol became a full-time job to get it in the house secretly, hide it around the house secretly um, till I got to the point where my relationship was breaking down um, and along the line, I've, I have two more sons. So my first boy, Jay, is now 19. Um, and he was his first son and he was very welcomed and very wonderful. Um, but I, drink, I drank through my pregnancies and not with Ryan. That was the other time I stopped. I didn't drink through Ryan. I did drink through Jay. And then when I was in my 40s, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> surprise, surprise, Lindsay um, discovered she was pregnant again. So uh, when I thought I'd gone through the change, <laughs> um, big shock. Um, now I'm only gonna say this because I'm hoping it inspires someone to get help that you need, but when I, found out I was pregnant with Alfie, I, I went for an abortion. Um, one, I was in my forties. Two, I was in a state. Um, and he knew I was going for that. And he let me go for that. In fact, his exact words, you've probably fucking killed him anyway. So I do apologize for swearing, but that was his exact words. Um, I didn't obviously have him. Uh, and he's now 10 and he's an absolute legend, <laughs> absolutely mental like me. <laughs> um, and so this, this year, this 18 and a half year relationship just gradually broke down. Um, I'd given up hope many, many times, like just stopped. Um, Lou, I've just lost hope along the way. I can't say I can't remember timelines, but I do remember the day I gave birth to Alf prematurely. Um, I actually fell off drunk and hit my head and knocked myself out the day I actually gave birth. Um, thankfully, he's got no adverse effects. Um, 
to that situation. Um, over the years, I'd made so many attempts to take my own life. Like I say, I'd given up hope. Um, because I didn't know another way. Um, and over the years before I even admitted I had a problem with alcohol, um, I knew if I admitted it, someone was going to say, you can't drink again. And I didn't want to stop drinking. I loved drinking. And even when it made me really poorly, I didn't stop me drinking. I eventually got in touch with alcohol services in Bishop Auckland. Um, and I attended groups and I quite often had wine in my bag when I was attending groups. So I did the whole Monty, I did CBT and I did all this. And I had no intentions of stopping. I didn't want to stop. I was just, I was just trying to pacify the people around me. I wasn't doing it for me. I was doing it to hang on to what I was, my relationship and for my children or for everybody but me. Um, and that went on for many, 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 many years. Um, on one of the attempts, uh, I say I've took so I've lost count the amount of times I've taken tablets. Um, on a couple of occasions, I've tried to hang myself. Um, and mainly the attempts on my life were just to put me in hospital, which I ended up doing lots of times. Like I say, I don't even remember. Um, in the hope, just like lock me up. And that's what honestly wanted. I really did think, look, I can't stop. I knew I couldn't stop because I've been trying to do it by myself, really. I didn't have these people that I now know are crucial to your recovery in my life. So it will be 10 and a bit years ago on one of the major points when this is it, I'm going to stop. I'd, I think it was a Thursday, I'd gone out and uh, he, I, we lived in the middle of nowhere in this house and he used to take the keys so I couldn't get to the shop. Well, anyone who need, knows if you need alcohol, you need alcohol and there was nothing going to stop me. So I'd ask neighbours to give me a lift or I'd get a taxi, 25 quid for a taxi to the nearest shop or I'd drink, I'd um, drive drunk, which is why he took the keys off me. Um, sometimes with my children in the car um, and it's it's a bloody miracle that I'm here and I haven't killed myself or my children either by you know on purpose or accidentally um, and this one day I thought I'm gonna need booze so I just asked my eldest boy who was still living with us um, where's the car keys and he said oh, I'm not allowed to give them you and I said well I've got a doctor's appointment I hadn't so I, I buggered off and I drove and I didn't know where I was going, but I needed alcohol. I was rattling my boobs off and I needed booze. And um, so I went and I drove to the nearest and I spotted this travel lodge. That'll do. And there was a Sainsbury's opposite. So I thought, right, I'll go in there. And I bought a litre or two of vodka, I can't remember, and a couple of bottles of Pepsi Max. And I went in the travel lodge and I bought myself in. And I was there for, I can't remember how long, but I was fully intending of, I thought, well, the longer I was there, the more I thought I can't go back now. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just drink myself to death. I didn't buy tablets, but I just thought, well, if I keep doing this, shit, I, I'm gonna, you know, and it was right on a bypass. So I thought I'll fling myself in front of a car or whatever it was. Anyways, I think it was a, nearly a week later, there was a knock at the door and it was the police and they found me and they took me to a psychiatric unit. And I was there for a few weeks. Um, and they detoxed me and obviously had some help. And I thought, right, this is it. This is the first day of the rest of my life. Um, exactly one week after I got out, my uh, my mum dropped dead. Uh, 
um, I, I didn't pick up a drink then. I didn't pick up a drink at a funeral. But of course, I thought, I thought through that. I've had a few weeks off. I want to drink again. I only have a little bit. And this was the cycle over and over and over again. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump back again. I've also lost my dad, my dear old dad along the way. And the guy who I found out was my dad died as well. So I never got a chance to meet him um, because I thought he was quite disrespectful to my actual dad. And I never wanted to meet him. Um, because my my dad was still alive. Um, and there's been a massive amount of deaths along the way as well, which I've also <laughs> skimmed, skimmed over. And I mean a lot, dozens, um, friends. Um, in fact, quite recently, I have, there was three in a week. Um, I've lost friends to cancer. I've lost so many cousins, aunties, uncles, friends. 14, I think, because I've been volunteering the homeless shelter. 14, I think we've lost out of there now. Um, and I thought about it and I'm thinking every single one of those deaths would have been an excuse for me to pick up a drink in the past. And it became more of a, and it probably sounds quite sick, but I've got a, I've got a reason. So if any if there was a if there was a comment on my drink, well, of course I've had a drink. So and so was dead, and that was just. So I've had dozens and dozens and dozens of reasons in this time to pick up a drink, um, but I've chosen not to. So when when it eventually came to to a head was um, my alcohol worker who I'd got at Sadler House came, she was called Lindsay as well. And she came to me this day in October. I'd finally decided I needed help. And I'd been for my assessment on the 4th of October, 2018. So I had it in my head and I was attempting a reduction. And the lady of the road had took upon himself, God bless you, Sam, for intervening. And she used to come across every day and get me my booze because she knew, you know, I was drink driving and there wasn't an option of, of getting the drink any other way other than drink driving. And so she came over and used to get me my booze every day. So I was, I was attempting this reduction. I got my place at Little Dale Hall. So I'd cut out the vodka and I'd cut out the bottles of wine. I'd gone on to Lambrini and I'd cut out the white cider and I'd gone to brown cider. Um, and then weeks later, um, my then partner not partner in my head he was still my partner I'd gone to Portugal with our two boys and I was I was left um and my lit my my key worker at, at the alcohol center had been out the day before and she said you're not well uh and I was like no I don't and I'm not and she said you you you're really bad colour. And I went, am I? She went, well, have you not looked in the mirror? <laughs> Absolutely not. Why on earth would I look in the mirror? I didn't wash very often. Uh, only when I was kind of told you stink. Um, and I didn't brush my teeth. Uh, quite often peed myself. And other things. I vomited pretty much every day. Um, and I couldn't have cared less what I smelled like, what I looked like. So when I did look in the mirror and I was this yellow, uh, my eyes were yellow, I was orange. And I'd started itching and getting all these scabs. Um, and my belly was, I would say, I've got three babies and as much as they were all prem, um, my belly was bigger than any of my babies. So my alcohol worker said, right, I'm going to make you an a GP appointment. In the meantime, you you need to ring nine 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 if you get any worse. Um, the day after that, they went to Portugal. Um, like I said, I hadn't eaten for about three weeks. 
I couldn't get upstairs anymore. Um, and if I did have a shower, I had to sit cross-legged in my downstairs bathroom, shower cubicle, the fear of falling through the glass. Uh, and he went and left me there. <clears throat> Um, the day after they flew, my friend, my enabler, my lovely earth angel came across and said, um, I tried to drink and I knew I couldn't drink. So there was this thing, anyone who doesn't know about an alcohol rattle and people say, stop drinking. You really can't. It's dangerous and it's not advisable without the aid of Librium. So I was attempting this reduction and so uh, this morning, this, the day after the flu, I was trying to drink to get this level of rattle stopped and I couldn't and it was in and out and in and out anyway. My dear friend came, went down the village and another friend who was a nurse came and brought these little tablets that put in my tongue and stopped the, the vomiting so I could get the booze in. Then she rang my sister who lived in North Yorkshire, who I'd become quite estranged from because of my alcohol and the shit I'd given her when I'd got I was drunk and the, the nastiness that had, had come out of my mouth um she you know why haven't you rang me and she came up she's right I'm coming up she she came up and she picked me up and she met my alcohol worker so the pair of them took me to the GP um and she's quite a bolshy bugger is my sister so when they took me in to see Dr Sashi says what can you do for me Linz um, and she was like, do I need to ask you? Look at the state of her. Uh, by which point I was in quite a lot of pain. Um, a lot of pain. <laughs> uh, and he said, well, for a start off, you've, you've jaundiced. I can see that. And he laid me down and I, I, was, I was crying. I started with pain and he, and he started pressing and said, well, your liver's enlarged, so can you get to the hospital? And she's like, right, yeah. Uh, right. And he went, now. So I was like, all right, so we started, and he was he picked the phone up straight away. Uh, Darling Ward, Ward 34, emergency Ward 34, and he was on the phone to someone, and I can't remember, and he was talking, uh, the, the death was mentioned, liver transplants were mentioned, and the rest of it's quite vague. As much as I wasn't drunk at that point, like I say, I was never, I hadn't got to the, I wasn't getting to the drunk stage then. I was like, how has this happened when I've been drinking litres of vodka a day, and now I'm doing a reduction, and all of a sudden, I'm ill. When we got there, I um, hope I'm not rambling too much, by the way. <laughs> this is coming out of nowhere. Um, they rushed me in and my sister, because they, they were on the way, and my sister said, shit, they should have that bed ready for her. So my sister started making the bed herself. <laughs> she, I was in pain, and she helped me to the doctor. said, right, we need a pee sample. And I remember uh, doing that way in one of those little cardboard things, right, we need this sample. And I sort of joked, as I do about a lot of stuff in life now, I went, well, ooh, I don't think it's supposed to be that colour. And it was black. And she went, oh, my God. And I went and got the nurse. Um, anyway, shortly after that, they hit me with morphine. And during my stay there, I was diagnosed with severe jaundice, alcoholic hepatitis and liver cirrhosis. Um, and I was really poorly and she rang my partner in Portugal and said, I will, I was. Um, and he said, oh, sorry, I didn't take on. It's a, bit, it's a bit cloudy here today and started talking about the weather. And I won't tell you the word she used afterwards that, but she put the phone down after some expletives. Um, so from then, she said, right, you're not going back up there. You're going to come with me. So I stayed with my sister and her family until the day I went into Little Dale Hall, where I'd been for my thing on the 30th of January, 2019. Shout out to Little Dale Hall and the shit I put you all through because I was a bloody nuisance. So when I went in, I was, I was signed up for a six month program, which to me seemed like an absolute lifetime. Uh, uh, it flies. Um, so anybody else who's listened to this, the powers that be, when you're cutting the funds for recovery services, give your head a wobble. Three months isn't nearly enough. <laughs> I'll just put that out there as well. 
so I did a six month program at Littledale Hall and then I spent because Covid hit there's a flat on site which I spent ended up spending another 11 months in um and during that time I finished my treatment um I actually did my six months and the way they, they fund some councils fund date to date some fund um weeks anyway little Durham County Council funded me till the 30th of January to 30th of July but my sister was bringing my children down my boys down for my completion so anyone who's done little Dill will know you get the completion and you can have your family to visit and um my eldest boy my, my Ryan had an had only been once and he said he wasn't going to come again um and I thought I've lost him he's seen too much his dad's an alcoholic his mum's an alcoholic and I thought and when I told him when it was going to be he said yeah why I man why I man I'll come down <laughs> so that was special so my sister brought my two of my nephews and it was quite a big a big event and she'd opened a Facebook Lindsay's rehab page on Facebook so there was never going to be a secret. I've never been a secretive about my alcohol. Now I'm re now I, I realise what incredible warriors you recovery people are. I shout it from the rooftops. But back then I was like, well, I couldn't have kept it a secret. I'd wanted to. Lindsay's rehab. <laughs> um, so that day was special. What made it more special is that it had to be on a Friday afternoon because my sister was finishing work early. Um, so it had to be either the Friday before or the Friday after. So she picked the Friday and I looked through and I went, right, it'll be this day. She went, oh, it'll be this day. And I looked at the date. And I thought, oh, my God. Like I say, I am not a religious person. I'm not a particularly spiritual person. But when I saw the date, I got a chill. Um, 2nd of August. That would have been my dad's 80th birthday. And my mum and dad's 61st wedding anniversary because they got married on my, my dad's 19th birthday. And I just thought that brought me strength because I'd all, I would always had this massive regret that they didn't see me. They didn't see this Lindsay. They never ever saw this Lindsay the last time. So I could say I was in the psychiatric when I saw my mum. She came to visit me. And the last time I saw her alive, I was in the psychiatric unit. So I never ever saw her again alive. Um, and my dad never ever saw me. Um, so I'd like to think that happens for a reason. So when I had my completion, <laughs> we play a song, you can have a walking song. So I chose two songs because I'm greedy. Um, and one was Take That Shine because my mum's funeral, as much as she was 72, she was a massive take that fan. Um, and that was played at my mum's funeral because they were both humanist funerals. And my dad's was uh, Bring Me Sunshine, Markham and Wise. <laughs> um, and they were played when I walked in with my, with my family at my completion. Um, so from the day pretty much I left Littledale Hall, well, I moved across the car park. Um, I stumbled across, I can't remember how, just that go out and find some volunteer work. Then people were going to charity shops and doing that. And I stumbled across Red Road Recovery. And I've never looked back. <laughs> um, and I started volunteering and I still am. And I have been offered jobs and I know I can get a job. Thank you, Richard, Glenn, and all the other people that have offered me jobs. I will be working for you at some point. I'm still dealing with things from my past. Um, and I'm in no rush. I will be there. Um, so I started running a cinema project. I go into the homeless hub. I've been doing that say, since the middle of 2019. I still do that. I'm still going there every Monday. And incredibly proud to see now the people I saw when I first went in making these connections come into our groups and I've got months of sobriety behind them so that's this is the reason I do this this hope I've done it these homeless people have done it I was in treatment with a guy Sonny he hadn't slept in a bed since he was 10. 
till he went into Little Dale Hall. He's now at Carlisle University and he's flying and obviously clean and sober. So as Emma Daggers would say, <laughs> boo boo the hope shots that she does. I hope, um, I've bunged a bit of hope out for you people who are either struggling, um, wherever you are in your recovery, or you're thinking of picking up again, or whatever shit storm life throws at you, and it continues to do so, you'll never get the answer from drinking drugs. Um, and I'm living proof, the visible recovery. Like I say, I'm not, I'm not recovered. No one ever, in my personal opinion, you never recovered. Um, most days I don't think about a drink. It doesn't cross my mind. Um, but when time's shit, my brain still goes like that. The answer's going to be with vodka. And it never will be. Plus it will kill me quite, quite quickly. Um, Do I stop there, people? Someone tell me, or shall I read a bit of my work out to see my progression? Do you want to hear that? Well? Oh, Linz, you just, oh, I've just, I've just pretty much cried nearly through like most of that. <laughs> you just, oh, I can't even put into words, Lindsay. You are absolutely amazing. And if nobody got hope from that, then I don't know what else is going to do it. Honestly, you are just an absolute true inspiration. And I'm really, really privileged to know you and really privileged to work alongside you. There's, there's just yeah. no other way to say it. You are an absolute superstar. And I love how you can come from, you know, such a dark, dark place, be so honest about it, you know? And I know that you do that because, because you care. To know and because you want to give that to other people you want to this is this is what visible recovery is do you know what i mean it's it, it is about showing people that you know life can get better it doesn't matter where you've come from do you know or what's happened or what you've done do you know it is never too late to change your life no no and oh, yeah i could say hope. three weeks after i got in i had my 50th birthday no one offered me Prosecco never, or, never. or blinis or anything. You know, there was no part in all that. How on earth? It's my big five or, I mean, I saw Robbie Williams on my 30th, take that on my 40th, rehab on my 50th. I was like, what's the crap here? Do you know what? Amazing. Absolutely gonna, incredible. I'm going to say as well, fabulous right. birthday. The comments to... for this were absolutely amazing. On, on our own personal little chat, Glenn did say he wants to give you a massive hug. Who does? Glenn. <laughs> Oh, Glenn. anytime, Glenn, regardless of my story or not. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, we got so, so many comments, Linz, for you. Um, love how honest you are, that your story needs to be heard. That was Alicia. Um, yes, Lindsay. Um, love you, Lindsay. You've taught me so much about your journey, Lindsay, from Jonathan. Go on, Linz, well done. Um, you've bunged a lot of hope to us all, Lindsay. Um, give, it's given me hope absolutely powerful message brilliant inspirational such a strong person you've made your children proud um, you, your parents will be looking down on you Lindsay and they were so proud to have you as their daughter um, just so many hearts and so much love in the room see this, this, this makes me happy it does we listen to these you know these awful heart wrenching stories but it, it, it does create togetherness and this is what it's about. Do you know what I mean? We don't recover alone. We can't do it alone. We do it together. Do you know, come and join us. Come and come and come to the dark side. <laughs> While I'm on a roll and I've got through that without crying, which yeah. that is a biggie for me. Yes, Anyone who knows me, I'm a massive cry. I say, I, yeah. everyone knew Lindsay was the big one with the big red face. Four <laughs> months, at least in my treatment, I cried every single day. Yeah, This was one letter I had to do and it's dated May 2019 so I went in the last day of January pretty much or the day before the last day of January so like I say this 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 cut in recovery and the cut in the funding and stuff really yeah. really when I look at that and reflect back yeah and they're giving a minute three months and I'm like you're not even touching the side touching it no just stop, chuck some more money in it. Because yeah. I was a, a, not a drain, well, yeah, a drain. The amount of times 
social service involving my children, ambulances, all of the, the money I've had spent on me that I am now giving back. Yeah. I'm not as that suck of resources now. So this was dated. This is, I had to write sort of a letter to my boys and I'm going to chuck, cut a chunk out the middle because it is really, really not good. Um, but I'll, I'll, you'll get. So this was, I had to, this is May 2019. And I had to write it sort of a letter to my boys. Um, Hello, boys. Mum here. As you know, I'm in rehab, trying to get well. By the way, some of the, how I think now isn't necessarily what I think about myself now and my, and my beliefs. But mum here, as you know, I'm in rehab, trying to get well. I know I can't make up for the years of shit I have put you through, but I want you to know I love you all and no one will ever take that away. I know you will have seen me in some states and for that I am truly sorry. No child should have to put me through what you have. Then it's Ryan, I left you with your dad when you were seven. That bit, I'm gonna leave. Jay and Alfie, I am so pleased you still want to come here and see me. Like I say, Ryan only came once, then I thought he was, I'd done too much. I'm so pleased you still want to come here and see me and that you keep in touch with your brother and sometimes you go and stay at his house. One day I hope you will trust me enough to stay on a more permanent basis with me and that you feel safe and happy. I feel nothing but shame and regret for the shit I have put you through and I don't think I will ever forgive myself as it is more like poison to me than the actual drink itself. Oh, Please try to believe me when I say how hard I am trying and I don't want to ever go back to that embarrassing, smelly, scruffy shell of a woman I was. I love you, watermelons, mum. By the way, that was because one of her children somewhere couldn't say millions and it came out as watermelons. <laughs> if you just think that's a bit of a strange thing, <laughs> I love you, watermelons. Oh, Linz, but look at the relationship you've got with those boys today. Oh, now, this oh is, my life. This is life. what recovery gives you. It gives you, gives you your life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had somebody, do you know, once say to me, oh, do you know, did you want to get your life back? And I said, no, I want a new life. Because the life I had before, do you know what I mean, wasn't wasn't any sort of life. But yeah. Do you know what I mean? When I was drinking, when I was using. Do you know what I mean? We build new lives. We build better lives surrounded by people that we love. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The proud of your lens. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Oh. Oh. I'll get down oh, to the job in hand. Round of applause to Lynn. And do that. my comments now like a professional lady. Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> oh, hang on. Love you, Lindsay. Good to see your face on here. We've got lots Jonathan of Chapman's offering me cake. I yeah. don't need any more calories. I'm doing well with the cake by myself. Don't I'll, offer me I'll take, cake. I'll take cake, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. I, I never turn <laughs> cake down. Caitlin's mm -hmm. up for cake as well. Cake, love it. Uh, mm -hmm. We're always up for the sweet stuff in the north. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. <laughs> Is there even a time to write? Oh, and me. Glenn, Glenn's just saying he'll have the cake as well. <laughs> <laughs> we're always oh, no. got time to write comments when they're worth it. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love you, Glenn. Fred, you smooth talker. <laughs> you smooth talk. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna apologize if anybody hears noises in the background, but my dog gets very jealous when I'm talking to the camera and I'm not paying him any attention. So I've That's got it. I, it's it's not me weird, making weird noises, it is my massive dog next to me. I apologize. Big Titan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. there, so she does he does that. Well, she just lies there. Yeah, <laughs> we're all oh. we're all doggers. We're all dog lovers. No, I nearly said we're all doggers. The, the, dirt, the dirty. <laughs> <laughs> we're all dog lovers up north. What did you say? So it felt I was oh, a really God Freudian slip. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just oh, so no, not no, like no. you, Sarah. Goodness <laughs> me. <laughs> I really apologise. Right, moving swiftly on. Let, let me just quickly just what? say because the lovely dirty gecko. Ha Emily's just put ha ha doggers so I didn't hear what you said but I've just got the gist of what you meant <laughs> Chris Rawls just put brand new life Lindsay you're doing absolute 
bloody lootly amazing. Thank yeah. you, the lovely Dirty Gecko. Thank you, Chris. We love the Dirty Gecko. We do. Right, okay. So next up, we've got the very lovely um, Mark. Now, Mark is one of our service users. Um, Mark's a great guy. Um, I had the privilege of having a, sit, a proper sit down chat to Mark on Friday. It's the first time I think we've had a proper, you know, real good conversation, Mark. And I have to say, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. You're a very insightful, very inspiring man. Um, yeah. So I've had several with Mark, actually. I get yeah. that. We literally, yeah. I was thinking I could talk a glass eye to sleep. So me and Mark would, honestly, we could have had a, fi <laughs> a five hour group and we'd still be yakking away. Yeah. <laughs> So um, without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Mark. Mark's going to let you know um, what he's going to be doing for us um, this evening. Take it away, Mark. Okay. Uh, I feel like I've been living on another, in another world and I listen to some of the stories, you know, of the horrors that people have had to endure. And, and I've had my uh, hardships as well, but it's just very different somehow to hear somebody else's. Um, yeah, I, uh, I've been playing the guitar for a long time, really, and it never was my conscious sort of intention to be a songwriter. Um, didn't ever remember wanting to be a songwriter at all. But about two or three years ago, I felt that I was maybe going through some changes. Um, finding more stuff about myself, you know, that I wasn't aware of. And songs started to come to me. So rather than me searching for them, they were coming to me. And um, so at the moment, I've got a, a catalogue of, of tunes, a small catalogue of tunes that I've written over the last couple of years. And there's about three or four of them that are probably my favourites. Um, and they, again, those ones just, it was like I was being, it was like my mind was being guided by an inner spirit or something, or my, my hand, my pen was being moved in that way. And it wasn't really, I don't know, they just sort of were done and dusted in 10 minutes. And I'm going to play one of those today, tonight. And it's, um, I call it, I've titled tune, uh, Live, Live for Today. And it was kind of inspired by mindfulness, which I came across for the first time, certainly as a practice in my own life. I'd heard about it before, of course, meditation, but I'd never practiced it or committed to it regularly. So I started that this summer, the end of the summer. And um, I found that I could maybe get close, closer to the present moment. And I did realize how chattery my brain, my mind actually was. And so the tune, the words I've wrote down, it touches upon really um, experiencing the moment the here and the now as a people, however you wish to, to phrase it. Um, and sort of um, just being with oneself, the way that, well, just finding, just being with myself really and experiencing all those feelings, um, good or bad. So I'll play the tune and then if you'd like me to do that now, and then I'll um, maybe maybe have a chat with you after it. I don't know how this goes, but I'm not the greatest singer in the world. Um, I shouldn't say that really, but if if the if the if the sound isn't right, then just sort of maybe gesture something and I'll try and turn the, tune the guitar down a bit or lower the voice, up the voice, whatever, but I'll grab the guitar, so. Uh, 
so yeah it's called lift for today and um yesterday's and tomorrow's um are never here to stay that's kind of one of the and happiness is is here but that's one of the lines in the song We can make this world a better place if we find a way to be true. Just take a good look inside of yourself. All of it is made for you. Don't leave no stone or boulder unturned. Searching all the places never been. Open up your eyes and the world will turn from a dark shade of grey to green. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a very, a very good fabulous. concept, Mark. Yeah, 
Yeah, it really was. I found I, yeah. I was definitely singing along there for the last for the last chorus. Like, yeah, I've got this now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job. It's a good job I'm never on screen for that bit. Yeah, I was going to have a bit of a boogie as well. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really impressed. Mark, that was brilliant. Really impressed with that. It made me laugh as well. I know you're going to read the comments out, but um, before you even started playing, I just got a lot of what a really cool, chilled guy he is. <laughs> Yeah, well, you've just you've got you've kind of just got this sort of like zen aura about you, Mark. It's just like you know. Well, one of the amusing comments from our the lovely Emily Jane. Yeah, it was obviously delusional. I think she's you know what I mean you know everyone knows Emily. Yeah. Anyone who's anything to Red Rose knows Emily. Uh, it's very much. It seems very much like myself. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, no. there's, there's nothing chilled out about you, Emily. Absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> love you, Dealey. Love you with a passion, but absolutely not. See, there's all the laughs gone up now. Yeah. All the little laughs have just flown yeah. up when I said that. Honestly, there was, there was loads of comments for you, Mark. Brilliant. Very Brilliant. catchy tune yeah. for today. Excellent words. Great tune. Well done. Very catchy. Love it already. Uh, excuse me. You think it's Sorry. my mum's doing the community comment? Sorry. Dear, she can't stop herself, can she? I can't help it. I'm a gobshite. That's I am getting you some yellow dungarees, woman. You can't just stop. Sorry. Sorry. You go, Linz. I'm, I'm going to meet you. Um, this is after my thing. It's Gary Flynn's mum, Elizabeth Bridgehouse. So she's put, glad you have a good relationship with your children. I thought I'd lost my son to addiction. But I'm so proud of Gary Flynn for all the hard work that he's put into his recovery. We have a good relationship now. Absolutely. It's not too late. Like I say, I had social service involved with my children, put them through absolute hell. Um, but just you can't give up. Um, some bridges can't be mended. Um, but just, you know, what I mean, you've got to have that. At hope. Jonathan Chapman absolutely peeing his pants to Emily's comment, as is everybody else who's seen the nonsense that she's writing. Oh, and she's put, I'm a good singer. We all know that's a lie. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Chapman, I think Jonathan and, and um, <coughs> Emily are just having a bit of a, a thing. Oh, Joe Duffield, yeah, very catchy. Hiya, Joe Duffield. Did it, I was in treatment with the lovely Joe Duffield as well. Uh, Chris Rowlands, love it already. Um, our friend who was on screen, Kevin, very catchy tune. Jonathan Chapman, live for today. He's having a, obviously a sing song as well. Jonathan, uh, Joe Bryan. I was in the kitchen and just singing, live for today, live for today. <laughs> very catchy, love it. Um, Emily's now just like, wow, wow, nonsense. Um, Jonathan Chapman met the lovely Gary Flynn on the Preston Garden Project. Yeah, he's an absolute inspiring man. Um, <laughs> Emily's got a bean about it. house. Um, we're going to be bombarded now with her. Um, <laughs> with Never and change, honestly, Emily. We love you just how yeah. you are. Honestly, I'm going to be singing that all night. I really, I liked the message in that mm. as well, Mark. I did live for today. It it's right. It's my head thought what well, that tune. My, my friend said, Mark, that tune's been in my head all morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you for that. For all those lovely comments, everybody. That means a lot to me. It's quite scary being a uh, performing. You know your own stuff. Yeah, I think absolutely. I'm probably speaking for other musicians as well, you know. And this, by the way, is a brand new first time experience for me uh, on Zoom. I've yeah. played my guitar just about everywhere else, but not <laughs> on Zoom before. So it was kind of uh, a bit, 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 bit strange, but I appreciate all the feedback and it's, it's helped me a lot. Thank you. You did a Don't fabulous job, Mark. Mark. Absolutely fabulous job. Thank you so much for coming along and doing it for us. Thank you. Thank you. Right, okay. Caitlin, Caitlin, oh. you're gone. <laughs> I need to plug my laptop in. <laughs> Caitlin. She's, she's, she's all, all of absolute professionalism oh, with Caitlin yeah. on a yeah. daily basis. That is because so she's going on a date night in a, in a, a, as soon as she comes off. Professional. It's all gone. Oh, I'm not prepared. Sorry, guys. And she's right. Right. And well, she's well, broken. Caitlin's plugging that in. I will just say to everybody, can everybody continue to like and share? We want to get this out to as many people um, as possible. Do you know, we do, we do this on a Saturday night to connect with you guys, you know, to connect with the community, to connect, you know, um, with everybody else in recovery, anybody that's struggling at the moment. You know, maybe you might just hear something that's going to give you a little bit of hope. That's the aim of tonight. Um, it's not all about red rose, although most of us are red roses here. 
Do you know, it's about community. It's about, you know, getting to know each other, getting involved with each other, helping each other out and giving each other a little bit of hope, you know, because together we can do great things. Oh, getting the message out to the people who are still struggling as well. Like, if you need Absolutely. help, we're here. Absolutely, we are. We're here. Right, Caitlin, who have we got up next? Well, next we've got Donna. <clears throat> so she's going to be sharing a live story in the perspective of um, a member of family and um, the effects of addiction on family. Uh, Donna's absolutely brilliant. She has been volunteering with us for God knows how many years. Um, I don't know what we could do without her, to be honest. So, Donna. Hi. Hi. I'm Donna. I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> so, bear okay. with me. Um, I met Fred in 2000 after coming out of an 18 year relationship. Must have been very naive, wasn't aware of drugs. Um, Six weeks into the relationship, I was shocked to find out I was pregnant. I thought this would change him, he would stop taking drugs. Um, he did for a while. Um, Sarah was born. He was good hands on dad all the time, came to all appointments, <laughs> um, in and out of addiction for years. Um, we had constant police at the door search warrants then it was courts then it was prison then it was having to drag the children to prisons um then when my daughter was 11 social decided she was out of parental control she was then removed from my care which was the hardest thing i'd ever gone through um, so not only was i dealing with losing my daughter i was losing i was dealing with threat addiction um, he's the only man that could tell me he was going to the shop and come home five hours later with a tale. Oh, you want to know what's been going on? Oh, I've been stood watching it. Yes, and I'm this dumb blonde that's going to believe you every word. I knew it was up to no good. Um, and I thought, you won't think I'm this dumb blonde. I used to order drug tests off the internet and randomly drug test it. Um, it was just years and years of a struggle of an in and out of addiction. Um, my way of dealing with it was volunteering, which I got out of. I felt like that was my support mm. with everything I was dealing with. Um, when my daughter was 14, I finally won her back. Yes, after two and a half years of fighting. Um, then... Um, for years I was saying to Fred you need to start going to groups you need to start oh he, he was he was going to do everything while he was under the influence but as soon as he wasn't it was not where can I get my next fix where can I next disappear to and then um, beginning of last year he decided he was going to come back to Red Rose, which I was pleased about. But because of the past, I thought he'll not stick to it. It won't last. It won't be long before. And I am so proud of him, what he's done. Um, never thought we'd get here after 21 years of <laughs> stress. Um, and life is so much easier now. We don't have no chaos in our life. I don't think the police now know where we live. Whereas at one time we used, to, I think we used to be the local police station. Oh, it was like we was the local police station. Um, I don't just class everyone at Red Rose as friends. I class them as family. Um, I can't thank them enough for the support we've had and the support that. We bad has led to where we are today, which I could not be any grateful than I am. Um, and I think that's about me, but thank you, everybody. <laughs> oh, thanks, Don. How, how, why did you stay with him all them years, Donna? Well, I could have been out. I could have served me time and got released. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer that one, Sarah. Go on. 
because all that badness wasn't me, it was the addict. Yeah, there we go, Fred. There we go. There we go. Addiction does not make us bad people. Sometimes <laughs> we do bad things, you know, and we've all, you know, anybody that's that's dealt with addiction, you know, will know we've all got things that we're ashamed of. I certainly have. I've certainly behaved in ways, do you know what I mean, that I am really not proud of. You know, I've done things that I can't take back. But yeah. what we come to realise is, you know what, we're not bad people. Do you know, we're suffering and addiction is an illness. It is an illness and it's something we will live with for the rest of our lives. It's this thing, you know, it doesn't go away, you know, but as they say in a, in a mutual age, you know, it can be arrested at some point, you know, and recovery is possible. It is possible. Do you know, look at, look at Donna and Fred here. Right. If you if if anybody ever comes to any groups and see these two together, honestly, they're an absolute comedy act. <laughs> the pair of them together is just absolutely hilarious. It's the highlight of my day. It really is seeing these two interact with each other. And do you know what? They've come through, do you know, that whole cycle, do you know, together. And now they're like, they're probably like they're like couple goals, aren't they? <laughs> they are absolute couple absolutely. goals. Absolutely. It's like, do you know what I mean? They love each other. They respect each other. They've both got their own lives, you know, and, and they're there for each other. <laughs> and they've got that understanding, do you know? There's no hiding anymore. There's no secrecy. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? They're a, they're a, they're a cracking family. Yeah. And, and the fabulous Sarah coming through. Yeah. I thought you were talking about me then, but it's not me. Well, you, you're fabulous. You <laughs> oh, know thanks. you're fabulous. Oh, thanks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we had that we had, did have the pleasure of having um fred and donna's daughter um sarah who i think is going to be doing some volunteering with us in the future um came to our speak one of our speaker boot trainings um i'm sure lots of people know about speaker boot i think Lindsay mentioned it before um and like she came you know and she did like a little a little speech on you know how how proud she is of her dad you know and how 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 much he's changed his life and how it's changed her life. And, oh, my God, it's like, oh. Like, it was, she's such a young girl. But I know. When she she speak, just, we were all... Pulled, pulled my... She pulled my heart out put it back in my chest. Yeah. She really did. It was beautiful. Can I bang out some comments here? Yeah, go for it. Still got the lovely Joe Bryan on. Jonathan Chapman's on fire today. It's not too late, Jonathan, to say Happy New Year. What a great love lounge, a brilliant start to 2022. Um, and absolutely, it's not too late. Happy New Year, Jonathan Chapman. Joe Bryan. Yes, Donna, from Joe Duffield. That's Donna. <laughs> Good friend of our Donna's, our lovely Joe D. Yeah. Hello, Donna, from Jonathan again. Oh, from Emily. Well done, Donna and Fred, from Emily. Where's Lola, the mascot? Who's Lola? The dog. <laughs> oh, right. I was thinking you get to Lola. Lola. You're a member of the family you hadn't met yet. <laughs> the lovely Joe Bryan says, Hi, Donna, you're amazing for doing this. Very strong person for speaking out about how families can suffer because people don't see how the families are. They just concentrate on the person. <laughs> hang on a minute. Who? The people are, uh, sorry, the, the families are in recovery as well. Well done for being there and helping others. Um, Elizabeth Bright, Bridgehouse again. Um, well done, Donna. Emily, but not everyone who was... Oh, I think Emily's on one now. Sorry, Emily. But not everyone who is an addict is a good person either, as I have had to endure it with my ex who is still uh, in addiction and extremely narcissistic. That's that's 100% right. Yeah, no, that's no, there, there, are, there, are, there are horrible people out there, but... Yeah. I think that's not um, to do with addiction. I think he's just an honest person. person. Yeah. Anyway, and big respect to you both again from Emily. Um, Kate Edwards saying hi, Sarah. <laughs> oh, hi, Kate. And hello to Donna and Fred from the same lovely Kate Edwards. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Right, fabulous. Who Who's next, Caitlin? So now we've had Donna. So now we get to hear a bit about Fred. So Freddie's going to um, share a bit about our updates um, off groups. Um, so yeah, and take it a, away, Fred. And give us a poem, I think, too. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you the poem at the end, actually. Oh, OK, then. Uh, yes. Yeah, at the moment, we're running groups most days uh, on a Monday. We've, we started just before Christmas, me and Sarah, the Risk of Relapse group. Because, you know, it's, it's a group that I put together myself because I thought at the time, you know, we, we, did, we weren't doing nothing on relapses and we're all at risk of relapses, whether you've been in 
recovery for two days or 20 years, you know, a relapse is up and we all know it's only around the corner. You know, if something bad happens, it can happen. You know, it can happen to anyone. It's been proved time and time again where people have been in recovery for multiple years and they have relapses and we always wonder why. You know, I said, well, we, we thought he was doing really well or she was doing really well and they end up back in the madness for a bit. And you know, it can happen to anyone. So that's on a Monday afternoon at two till three. And we do that at our office, which is at the YMCA in Lancaster. On a Tuesday, we do the five ways to well-being, which is at Cornerstones in Lancaster as well, <laughs> which, you know, is, which is a quite well-attended group, actually. We do get quite good numbers there because it, it was a government-run thing where it's, you know, it's, if you've never been to one, I would advise you to go and just, you don't have to take part, just sit and listen because it does get you out in the community. It, it gets you to realise what you're not doing that maybe you should be doing to help you on your recovery. You know, the, the, the five ways are connect, give, take notice, learn and be active. I bet everyone was thinking then, these on the screen right now, he's going to forget one. I never forget them. I do it that much. Right? But, you know, it, it does help in your recovery. You know, it does give you them tools to to grow, you know, as a person as well. Not You know, even people that are in recovery that have done them have said that it's helped them improve their lives in different ways. You know, it, it, it's, it's just one of them things. I'm not... I'm going to have to ask Donna to help me on this next one. On a Wednesday, we have... Oh, sorry, it's half past 10 till half past 11 Jesus. at Cornerstones. Jesus. On Tuesday night, we do... I suppose it's coffee and connect, we could call it. A connection lounge, we call it. But it's like, we, we do it at Positive Futures, which is up on White City. It's, I think, White if I remember City, right... White oh, sorry, White Cross. Yeah, she has to correct me on everything. <laughs> typical, typical wife, in it? <laughs> but, you know, it's like, you, you can come, we have, we, we, we get free curries off. What is, what is it, Sarah? Can't remember who we get it off. Indian. I know eat it's Indian. Indian. I know it's Indian, but... What, what's eat, the place it's at? called Eat Indian. East Indian, which is in eat Lancaster Indian. Town Centre. Yeah. Yeah, and so you're br brilliant guys to give us it every week for nothing. And, you know, sometimes to give us that much, we have to go around and try and find people to give it away to. And, you know, they are absolutely lovely. And anyone's welcome. That's from seven till nine, but we usually open about quarter to seven. But, you know, if you just want to pop along, have a chat, a game of pool, or whatever, you know, we sometimes we have quizzes, we have karaoke. It's, it's basically having a laugh, you know, it's because a lot of the groups that we do, are sort of, you know, the group settings, but here they're not... You know, it's, it's not, they're not structured on the Tuesday night. You can have a laugh and you can meet people in different aspects rather than a structured group. You know, it's just one of them. On the Wednesday morning, the, the girls do yoga. I'm not sure where to do the yoga now. Where is it? Caitlin? So it's at stage and time. Um, so, yeah, that's up at the top of town. So it's just across from the canal. So if you go into Edward Street, keep carrying on it's on a corner it looks like a florist but it's there that was it. That, 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 sorry lads that's only for the ladies and they do the ladies group as well women's group which that's, we, that's 11 o'clock at Esquires or, or any any of you ladies out there women you're welcome to go you know they, they, again they just have a coffee and a chat it's not structured or not and it's just basically getting to meet others in recovery you don't even have to be in recovery if you want to come along you know, and help in some way or offer, you know, offer a shoulder or talk to someone because you haven't got no one to talk to. The ladies will be fine with you doing that. We are going to start a men's group up soon, lads, but at the moment it's it's in the pipeline. So I don't want to go into it too much because we don't know when it's going to be or where it's going to be yet. So, you know, in the future we will let you know about that. We've also got... An A, B, C, D coming up, which stands for Absent Based Community Development, which means basically every one of us out there have got different skills. You might not know you've even got them, but it's about sharing them with others. Maybe, you know, you could be good at creative writing and someone wants to learn, you could learn them to do that. You know, it's, it's about 
went as a group of us there, the amount of skills that we've actually got between us is quite a lot. You know, we, we, you might not realise it at the time, but when you get together and you, you realise, oh, well, I'm really good at this, like Mark's really good at on the guitar. You know, he, he could teach you a couple of bits on the guitar or if you're interested in poetry, I can teach you poetry. You know, just everyone has a skill and it's about sharing them with everyone else and helping anyone else that wants to learn that skill you've got. You know, it doesn't have to be to a, a doctoring degree or nothing, but you know, it's, it's about giving them that st first step on the ladder if they want to, they want to learn it. And you know, you, you could be that first step on the ladder for someone else. So you see, we, at the moment, we put in for the funding for it, and we're pretty sure it will get passed. So you know, we, we will release more in the future on that. On a Thursday morning. We have the here and now, which is at our office again, which is the YMCA building in Lancaster, as everyone knows, which is, we, we, we usually start about half 10 to half 11. Sometimes we run a little bit over, but <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's another one that's quite well attended, which, you know, it's just one of the things. We will, in the future as well, be doing the allotment. We did go and have another look at it yesterday, which it's still it's still all right. Still needs a few bits doing to it to prepare it for the summer. But you know, it's, it's like if anyone's really interested in helping out in any way in doing some maybe, maybe not proper gardening, but similar thing. There's a lady down there. She's a beautiful lady. I, her name's gone off out my head for the moment, but she, I think she's about seventy odd, and you know, she, she does need help down there. It's Ronnie. She's an Ronnie. absolute Ronnie. warrior of a woman. Ronnie, Ronnie is my spirit animal, that woman. <laughs> She's amazing. And anyone who can give her any help in any way, you know, just digging the sides up or just digging a few little things or carry, you know, moving a wheelbarrow. Of, it won't be heavy stuff. It's wood chippings and stuff like that. It's not heavy. So, you know, if you, if you want to get involved in that, just let one of the... Red Rose team now, and we'll put you in touch with Ronnie. And you know, we, we, we did say we try and get us some help, so we are desperate for people who want to get into that. What day, Fred, is that again? Sorry, what time? You should, you should, well, if, if you want to do that, it's like with Ronnie, he, we'll pass you on to Ronnie, and she'll you, you can go down there anytime she's there and just help anytime. Her. anytime. Okay, yeah. you know, there's no set time on that because I say at the moment we have got the allotment and but. We're not going down to it on a regular basis at the minute. Well, the weather's kind of hampering yeah. us at the moment, Basically, isn't it? We, yeah. we bedded it down for the winter, me, mm -hmm. me, Fred and Linz. Um, you know, got our, got our dig on. Well, we were know. until the frog appeared and then Sarah sort of was up the other side of the allotment quite quickly, wasn't it? When little frog... The frog didn't bother me. You was, When you started, like, trying to stick it in my hair... Try and put it down your top. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> the, the, the bad thing about that, girls, is most of the cardboard we put down blew away. Oh, no. Oh, never. <laughs> we didn't cover it, did we? Oh. <laughs> so we might need to redo that. Or so, so very clearly, we need somebody with <coughs> actual gardening skills to help us. Yeah. So as soon as, the, as soon as the weather starts to get a little bit better, we will be there every Thursday. All right, on the Friday, at 10 o'clock till 12, we're up in Morecambe. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome at last, <laughs> which is, again, it's just another connection lounge. Oh, and it is at, it's going out of my head. Isn't it? Oh. West End Impact. West End Impact. I was going to say community centre, but that's around there. <laughs> yeah, we're at West End Impact. Again, it's just a tea and a chat and a few biscuits and stuff, having a laugh again, Get, getting to know people in, you know, where, where you're this not. Is, in, that's in where we park. met the lovely Mark. Yeah. Wasn't it? Well, so yeah. Well, sort of not. I first met Mark. Yeah, actually, I love the Lindsay. <laughs> we, we used to do the five ways, didn't we, around that Stanley's, and that's where I first met Mark. Mm. And so, you know, it's, it's like we, we are hoping in the future to start sort of getting more and more involved for them people that are in Mork and that are listening. You know, in the future we will be doing a bit more, hopefully. <laughs> but as, at the moment we're just a bit snowed under it, everything. But in the future, we will do it. So basically, that's our week. Thank now you, for Fred. your bomb. I love this. It's fucking pages long, you know. 
Go on, poem from Fred. Fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do the little one first. Some addicts like to sit and beg. Maybe so they can... I can't even read that, you know, it's good. <laughs> That's Maybe not rhyme, that, Fred. Get by fast. That's it. Let's look through a passerby's eyes. See what they see while they're walking past. Usually unkept and mostly unshaven and clothes dirty. Maybe they look like rags. But if you stop and talk to them, I'm sure they'll come out with one of them blags. Each and every one of them all have their tales to tell. And come on, let's be quite honest. Some of them have that unwashed smell. Then there may be another type, the ones who think they're funny. Yet all they really want to do is get their hands on some of your money. Then they're also the tearjerker who can easily falsify a cry. No wonder people, some people don't just walk past. If they could, I bet they'd fly. Then there are the battlers. Usually they'll be black and blue. They hope that people have sympathy so they can get more money from you. So now I have explained it. I am sure you'll all agree. It's only when they ask for help can they truly be set free. Right. Absolutely. This is, this is a long one. Fred. Right, just put them pen to paper so a new poem I can start. Every word I do write down usually comes from deep within my heart. Addicts, that's what most of us are. A sad, yet also true fact. At times I like to look at people's faces to see how differently they do react. So now please all remain calm and make yourselves feel comfortable inside. Prefer, prepare for the words I have written. You may have an emotional ride. I believe I am one of the lucky ones. You could say it, I've been saved, I suppose, but only with help given by others from organizations, especially Red Rose. Now I always seem to have a smile. It is rare you will see me in sadness, but only because of help from other people, or I'm sure I'd still be stuck in that madness. We all know it won't be easy. It's like using feathers to squash a grape. But we're help offered from other good people. We found we can escape. Go visit any town or even a big city. Stop anywhere and have a look around. You can notice how many addicts may be close. They usually have their heads looking at the ground. It doesn't matter what you were using, prescription drugs, illegal ones, even beer, to break free. You need to stand tall and have the courage to face up to your fear. Maybe you used heroin or cocaine. No one on the streets a smack or crack. And once the drugs have a grip on you, it's hard to find your way back. That's how addiction likes to have you, stuck in that crazy little zone. Sometimes another addict, addict may visit, but mostly it likes to keep you on your own. Even when we would see good people, we wouldn't ask for help at all. Deep inside, our voice will be screaming, please help me break down this wall. Then once they were leaving, we would just watch them walk away. Proper hating yourself for not speaking out, saying I'll do it another day. Yet even knowing that would not be, not a chance that'll ever occur, as the other deep inside us doesn't want us going out there. I used to look into a mirror at my reflection, just gaping back. Now I always ask myself the question, what made me take that smack and crack? I've even had people laughing, like the story I've told was funny. But the smile soon left their faces when I told them how fast it takes your money. If only I had time travel, Go back to that very first day and whisper in my own ear, say no, just walk away. I really wish that it was possible, but it's not, as each of us know. You see, now I'm in recovery. I've got the chance to give life another go. 
I think of all the lives ruined by the horrors of that crack and smack. That is why I love to be volunteering and being able to give something back. As when I am helping others, I suppose in a way I get a thrill. And as for the rest of the day, I walk round feeling quite brill. Once an addict, always an addict. That is how the saying goes. But when you get into recovery, you can feel it in your fingers and your toes. As once you have escaped, the feeling you get from being fine, away from a life full of madness, is like living, sorry, free. Being free is like living a life full of harmony. You will realize once you've got it, you could walk well over a mile. And every time you see your reflection, it's looking back with a beaming big smile. Others around you will even notice, some may even say it too. And the best price I believe to be, the best uh, past, I don't know, I'm sorry, I've, I don't, I've written that down, I don't know what it says, <laughs> is at last meeting people like you, as people meeting the real you. I think that's it. Oh, no. Can't remember if this is part of it. Yeah, that's it. Yes, Fred. Ah. <laughs> See, talents all around. Do you know that took me eight well, minutes to write. Eight minutes. No one likes to show off, Fred. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my creative side to come out. Yeah, me too. Apart from making Yorkshire puddings, I don't think I'm very good at anything. Yeah. You're good at your creative things. side is helping others. There you go. There I'll take that, go. Fred. Thank yeah. you, darling. Can I read oh. out some comments? Because oh, the, the, I'm guessing there's a lot. I'm trying not to scroll back to because I can't go back, but the love arts have been flying there for Freddie. Um, where did I get to? Big respect to you both. Kate Edwards again. Hello, Donna and Fred. Kate Edwards going to be here on Monday again, Freddie. Um, well done, mate, from Emily. Some good groups going on. Jordi again. Um and Kate again, the A, B, C, D think, skills things sound good. Uh, and Kate has also got a degree in creative writing. Ah, see, oh, for days. I, I, that, that must have been consciously sent to me. Yeah, must have been. <laughs> what can I say? Um, Darren Bird! Where Darren have you been hiding, Darren Bird? Bird. Yeah, come back to us. Mag Stevens is watching. Did you write this poem, Fred? Yes, absolutely, Kate. He's incredible. He's got hundreds of the blinking things. Um, Jonathan Chapman, what a meaningful poem. Elizabeth Bridgehouse again, fantastic, Fred. I'm going now. Stay safe, everyone. Uh, Glenn Jaden, uh, brilliant, Fred. Joe Bryant, so, 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 so true. Thank you, Fred. You have warmed my heart tonight. Kate again, that's amazing, Fred. Loved it, Fred. Brilliant, Fred, from the lovely Joe Duffield again, from the heart. Uh, Jonathan Chapman. Is it? Is it? God loves a trier. Can I come round with some Yorkshire puddings, Lindsay? <laughs> totally relevant to the government. <laughs> I'll keep you posted, Jonathan. But thank you for <laughs> thank you for keep tuning in. Oh. Bless him. He's an avid watcher yeah. of the Lancashire User Forum. So he thank is. you, Jonathan. He is amazing. Now don't forget, guys, to keep liking and sharing this, even when we've gone offline. Do you know? Um, and it is recorded. It's played on YouTube. You know. Um, you can always look back on Facebook, watch previous luffs. Um. Get them out there to as many people. You know, this is what it's about, is connecting with other people um, and trying to help each other. Um, I do want to say as well that um, if anybody's looking, you know, employ employment as well at Red Rose, we do currently have um, two opportunities available within the LA's, put my teeth in, within the liaison and diversion team. Um, there are currently two part-time jobs available, one um, with L&D in Kendall and one at Haverick. Um, they are working in custody suites, working in prisons, um, and ideally they would like you to have um, experience of the criminal justice system. So this is the only time, really, people, that you're ever going to be, you know, it's ever going to be looked on as a positive for you to either have been to jail or for have been in trouble with the police. You know, it's a, because it's about visible recovery. It's about you being able to go into these places, you know, and show people, you know, that you've lived that life too and that you've been there and you know how hard it is, but that you've managed to change your life. Um, so if anybody is interested in that, um, you can look onto our website, you can look onto our Facebook page. I think Glenn 
um, who is our L&D manager, is going to be looking to wrap what uh, I get sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> <That's gonna> <laughs> <see>. <laughs> um, he's looking to wrap this up on Tuesday. I think he's looking to and um, put it out to um, uh, interviews and stuff. So if anybody wants to apply for it, get it, get applying um, soon. Here he is, the man it. himself. Glenn. Ooh, 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 Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> that just reminded me when you were saying about I'm saying I will be working for Red Rose Recovery at some point and getting paid work, even though I do all this wonderful work I do for free for the last two and a half years, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I was spoke to the, the fabulous Glen Island and he said, are you going to apply for that job with the um, liaison diversion team, Linz? And I went, no. And I went, oh, by the way, I haven't got a criminal record. He went, oh, that's a shame. I was like, Is it? Is it oh, it's so random that it's it, you've got to have that comes, when, you... when it comes to liaison and diversion you know these these are the skills that are necessary yeah lived experience guys absolutely we've all got that just shows we've all got something to give doesn't matter how we've lived our lives doesn't matter what the things we've done in the past we can turn it around we can and there are opportunities out there there are. It always games. makes me laugh, so it's like, it's the only interview you ever go when you say, have you got a criminal record? No, you can't have the job then. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like... <laughs> it is, it, it is, and I think that, sorry for coming in, but I just want to just just touch on the fact that um, they realise how valuable that people that have got that lived experience is in them kind of settings, yeah. and along that, alongside the more clinical aspects of it, um, I think that they've realised that they can't do it without that lived experience, but also we can't do it without them as well. And the job that, um, the one in the prison, it's actually a new service called Reconnect, it's a sister service, every year as an diversion. We started with three people um, in Preston as a pilot, and we've now got, I think it's 14 staff across nine different police stations, um, six, six prisons, and a friend, forensic services, so secure units. So it, it, there is, it is opportunity. Every single member of staff have got some sort of lived experience um, touching on domestic violence, criminal justice, mental health, substance misuse, um, <laughs> all them different. So what I would say to you is, um, if you feel as though that you want to work in that kind of setting, get on the website and apply. I am, we have got applicants and I am going to shut it off on probably Tuesday. So you've got till Tuesday to apply. If anybody wants to, um, ask me any questions about it. Get get my number off Sarah or Lindsay, and um, give me a ring, and I'll I'll give you some more insight on that. So on that note, I will give you the love lounge back. Sorry about that, Sarah. All right, thank you, Glenn. Thanks, Thanks Glenn. And I love that. Right, it's about it's about that two pronged approach, isn't it? It's about working with people, you know, that are in those settings that are professionals, you know, and then bring in the professional side from lived experience. You know, we've all got something to offer, and if we all work together, that's how systems are changed. That's how change is made in people's lives. You know, if we're all on the same page and we're all working together, that's what this is about. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, do you know what? I think I think that's us for tonight, guys. I think that's I think that's the end of the love. Shall I just quickly wang out these last couple of comments yeah, on, just in no case I've missed anything? No Chris Rowlands is back on the Dirty Gecko. He loves your poem, Fred. Um, I think that was a thing on me. He's put Yossa Hughes gives a job. Can anyone remember Yossa Hughes? Or is anyone <laughs> anyone of an age can remember no. Yossa Hughes? No, not me. Too um, long. Jonathan Chapman, um, joking aside, what a great live love lounge this evening. Thank you all. Joe Duffield again. Yes, Glenn. Can I get you a criminal record if you need one? He's an absolute, he's a trier. He's, he's having a <laughs> No, you can't get me a criminal record. I'm an <laughs> upstanding citizen now. I think that's amazing about the job requirements. Lived experience so underrepresented. Hi, Glenn. Long time no see from Jonathan again. No, don't go. Oh, he's going to be grieving no, now for us. Oh, no. Um, and Kate Edwards, who has put hundreds of comments on all night. Thank you, Kate Edwards. I stumbled across this by accident tonight, but I'm really glad I did. Thank you, Kate Edwards, for all your lovely comments. And thank you for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to like and share. Yes, like and share, like and share. So thank you very much to all my lovely guests. Um, I know it's it, it can be really it can be really daunting, guys, you know, to come on live and to, to share your heart and soul and to share something about yourself. Um, so, you know, thank you very, very much for everybody that's that's come on and helped out tonight. And look, no tears. No tears. Eh? It must it's be a, a record. Woo. Must be a bloody it's record. A <laughs>
<laughs> we'll, we'll bring you a prize in for that, Lynn. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Oh, Thank you very much, God. guys. We shall see you again soon. Bye. 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 Bye.